Fogged, what, what, what do you make of this? A bit of a kind of a switch around from both sides really in the draft. We have obviously Talon, they open up with the bat. Out comes the Quap in response. Then they say, well, you know what? We're not going to put the bat mid. We're going to get jabs on the sideline uh, side with it and get Mapkoda on the puck. What, what do you make of all of this? I, they're just going for their absolute most comfortable heroes. They are struggling, of course, as we saw even the last game when they perhaps did have this cool kind of scaling. They are buying some type of time to be able to get that. Tundra actually ends up outscaling them because of all the Roshans they were still secure and stuff. I think this is just like, guys, give us our biggest comfort heroes and try to set up Mikoto for some success playing his literal best hero. So. All right. Let's and how, how good of a puck game has it ended up being? Uh, I mean, it's... I, it can be good. I mean, it's a it's one of those matchups that we don't see too often anymore. Quap versus Puck. Like, what is this? 2016, 2015, something like that, which we used to see it all the time. It has its merits, but it also has perhaps its downfalls because Abaddon has a lot of different ways to play around it. You get coiled, you walk out, you borrow time, a friend gets coiled, you can shield them after they break it. So there's definitely going to be some ways to protect each other. And eventually there are going to be these forms of silences that can be annoying too. The Quap Shard is something that didn't used to exist, of course, versus something like Puck. It can trip you up, can be annoying, and the steals from the Rubik could also be. So I'm curious about this last pick though. You know, they must have seen something really big for this Rubik. It's not something you see often grabbed as a last hero, but Snaking, he must have seen something that he really liked about it. Maybe it is just versus that Puck versus, I mean, this Morph and stuff, these instant disables, but Morph is actually last, so. Yeah, that's going to be the bit of an interesting one to see. And, and how do you sort of feel about the offlane back? Because very much a, a position that not a lot of other teams are really playing this hero in. I think it's only Whisper, right? I think he's literally the only other player in the world that does go for it. But they wanted to get the matchup, right? They wanted to switch it up and get that puck mid. Doesn't look the easiest for him this game versus the Abaddon. And I'm, I'm mostly just, I'm going to be watching mid a lot here because the puck, you know, it is a quote unquote answer to the quap in lane and also in the middle of the game. But I9, he's probably played this matchup a lot too, and times have changed. And what's for the result? You just go zero points and dagger in this matchup. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you just go for the farming build, which sometimes just benefits Quap even more because dagger is a pretty underwhelming ability after the early game. After laning phase in particular. And Tundra, I mean, this is a very Tundra draft. It's actually a very similar draft that we saw even earlier, right? We literally watched EG, Picaz, playing the carry of Adden, playing with this Queen of Pain from the mid lane when Christy Smile was able to pop off. And it looked very good oh. as a scale this Nay. He's going to find himself ending up underneath the tier 2 tower there. He got tossed. All things these being said, Q, we saw him have a tremendous performance on the Tiny the other day. Even though they ended up losing that game, he was kind of just a secondary, or like a tertiary core in a way. Uh, and what do you sort of make with the uh, the Morphling as that last pick? Is this uh, one of those games where it's like, all right, you know, th they get a certain point at this, this Morphling's going to take over? In theory, he should be able to, but there is, like they said, there's a few things that maybe could just trip him up. Shard, Quap, Silence. Same thing for the Abaddon if he's able to get on him. But 23, I mean, this is his, I mean, this, again, it's his dream. It's his Grandmaster tier. On the edge, setting him up for a good lane Three. so far. One more impetus. You got him. Right, this is going to be a nice lane for 23 to farm in. Definitely. Probably seeing that as well, too. Seeing that they probably can't actually threaten him. They're just going to feed him one charges if they do end up going for him. So, yeah, 23. Set up with like one of the best five position heroes to secure his lane. There always is going to be a bit of a... You know, a way for 33 to come back in the game, as we've seen him do so many times on the Beastmaster, sending the boar, getting those stacks and stuff going. So, see if Ollie goes to block those camps. Is there 23 just gets socks at two? All right, he'll just step up and take it. All right. He's believing in himself. Mid, though, is kind of... Oh, kind of even. It's looking pretty good. It's about to be, I mean, we'll see who's going to be able to get the better rune control with some of these rotations and enchanter screams or something like that. Oh, bottom lane. Oh, again? Oh, no way. I mean, this is looking to be a very good start here for 23 on the safe lane morph. Level three on the inch already, too. Soxa can't even punish to get a kill back. That one is an unexpected one for 33 to die like that. He has to walk back. And he's level two. Not even level three yet. 23. He's really pushing the limits here. Uh, Arrow connects, but he's just fine. Glyph, Makoto, trying to bully nine. They are setting up to check the runes. A CQ, he's set up around top. Makoto's gonna check bottom. Nine actually might get forced away. 
Yeah, he can't go for a wall rune here. He might he may have to just go to base pretty soon too. Yeah, I think he's gotta go back. No bottom. Toxa. Somebody get him for the kill, but 23 in return. Get a courier. And he's he's gonna be able to pick up the kill in in return. That's a 23 more than happy with Oli dying. So he gets a, another kill for himself, it. And Ollie with the death. I mean, he can come back and bring some regen. The 23 is lacking, so can help him out. That's a phenomenal start, really, for him. And Mikoto, since he does get those double runes set up, he is going to have the advantage also onto mid. And they get getting oh. in on top. They've got the shield, though. And the stacks with the, the Mist of Avernus, the Curse of Avernus, but not enough to stay on top of Jabs. Goes for the double no build, going very aggressive onto Jabs. Trying to get any type of kills here. But yeah, Skeeter is free farming, so 28 and 11. Mikoto, even though they did push 9 away, it's actually pretty close on the experience. So 9, he should be able to hit 6 almost at the same time. But a rotation can absolutely come. It's 33, should be fine. But a rotation can come onto mid lane pretty easy to set up onto 9. They have a great way to break the coil too, with, the, with Q playing tiny. So if they do see an opportunity, could potentially set up for 9 here with Mikoto having a good start. Yeah, five to one. And Ollie, he's gonna well, he's he can now leave twenty three alone down bottom because the beastmaster has been forced out. He's gonna take away some neutrals as well and even set up around mid. So now they're gonna have the double sitting double uh, support sitting around there to set up for the potential coil and get that rune again. Also for Makoto. What's Tundra going to do to respond to this? Because this I mean, is pretty painful. They have a Morphling that's free farming on one side and a Puck that's now just getting every power, uh, getting all the runes. They're bringing the sacks are over, but that, that's it the, at the moment. Decent arrow. He has to, all he just has to take it. The attack would have gotten it. But the coil's there. Q. And you get the toss. The snaking's hit. Now get the avalanche off the end of the coil and that'll be enough. Q able to step up with the toss. They take nine down doesn't even have to break it. And that's with supports rotating over. I mean, 33, he's starting to just jungle completely. He wants nothing to do with bottom lane. And he can't actually do the Ancients or anything because he's low level, so he's... I mean, he's doing it efficiently. He is hitting both of these camps with it, and they are stacked. I just cannot afford to, to be a liability down bottom. Knows how easy it is for 23 to, to play aggressive, dive in and kill him. I mean, they're giving a free thing to 23, but 9, he's turned up. Can he get the pop onto him? He's spotted by creeps, so he can't. 23's gonna shift up. Gonna be that Lincoln's Rush to deal with the Roar in particular. Roar and Lift, the two instant disables that are gonna be coming out from Tundra. It should be very good timing coming out for 23 as well. Jabs also in the meantime. Lane, of course, not going the best versus the Abaddon, but it can be too, can be expected, but Q, he's had these stacks ready for him. So he's going to be able to farm and catch right back up. And Ollie, he scouted the stacks. He knows that this is going to be going on. He even takes the boar away. Oh, it's a deep play here. I don't think they can go for it. Even 33 is turned up. I definitely look like they were considering the, the Dream Coil setup. And 33, he's queued up the drums of Slam. All right. Interesting to, to see it being done in a game where there's not really anything that would have threatened his ancient creep, right, if he wanted to go that route. I mean, the Enchantress 20, oh, but that's that, way yeah, later, yeah. Yeah. you know? But, uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely interesting to see him go for it, because it doesn't, I mean, it's looked a little underwhelming at a lot of times. Yeah, and I think, yeah, kind of... A, at least recently, the, the other times that it got picked up were in situations, what, when there was like, what, a Night Stalker or... Yeah. Something that was going to have an easier access, easier route to, to being able to deal with the Ancients. Yeah, I mean, like, let's see how many stuns there really are. Stuns and silences, right? Mm -hmm. That's the way to stop the drums. There's a waning rift. There's going to be stuns that come out from Tiny, but besides that, I mean, maybe it is going to have the successful stuff, so we'll see from 33, because it's going to come out, obviously, a bit slower. I mean, well, maybe that's the thing as well, because he's had a slow start. He, he knows he's not going to hit the timings on the more traditional yeah. uh, item build up that you want to go for as Beastmaster. So yeah, I guess so. It's going to go for this and hope that it uh, benefits the team more. It does a lot of damage. You know, 1600 damage or whatever it is before any type of axe debuff amplification or any th or damage amplification and stuff like that. Just if you can actually get it to connect with every single instance. 2k lead out of these lanes for Talon.
Things looking pretty good. Bat now, of course, catching up after he's done his stacks. And Makoto looking to play active. A DD rune has been found. Snaking likely to go down here. He's going to save the coil as well for the next kill. Let's see if they go for Skitter as well. He's holding a skill point. So tough for them to really punish him here. But now they can perhaps get some good damage on the tower here with his DD on the puck. And I, I, I mean, that's pretty much the Witchblade done also for Makoto. Phenomenal start for the mid in the safe lane. Yeah, this tower is going to drop very fast. Concerns for sure for Tundra. A really nice study game. Stuff here from Talon. Uh, and just, yeah, the fact that 23 is... He is going to hit all his timings. This he is really a perfect is. start on the morph. Level 9, he's well on the way to the Lincolns. Took bottom tower already, took yep. top tower, so even more golden flux for the morph to get that fast timing. And with a, a slow of a start, as some of Tundra's heroes are ha having, he, he doesn't mind getting involved. Won't quite be yeah. able to grab the illusion there, 9. He's able to pick it up in time. Fancy footwork too. Turns into the quad, blinks away just to make sure he's safe. This is going to be one of the faster Lincolns I think I've seen. Ten minutes in, he's already pretty much got the ulti orb and that purse. I mean, then, as you said, at that point, the only way he's dying is if he's making mistakes. Mm -hmm. Very hard for them to, to kind of catch him. Unless they, like, perfectly synergize, you know, like a Rubik steel to break the Lincolns with a roar from the side angle or an arrow. 33's changed his mind. He's like, yeah, you know what? Eh, drums of slime, not going to be worth it. He'll go Dominator. I always prefer this personally, but it's fun to watch the drums of Slum anyway. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. 2K lead, jabs. Also, as we said, he's completely caught back up. He's level eight, boots to travel online. Feeling good. Feeling very good. Tundra, Radiant just looking to continue to set up the map so that Skeeter can continue to find the, these, the most opportune places to farm. He's about 2,600 in on the Relic. Yeah, he should have a pretty good timing, of course, but he wasn't given the influx of a bunch of kills, as we saw, of course, from the Morphling, and also taking towers, it's off the menu for now. The town playing this early game very smoothly, and now they're going to go for a new to another tower. Ollie, he's got the Rally. Snaking is here to stop it. And he actually does have enchant stolen, so steals it away, but it gets restolen back. In his tower. They have to rotate three heroes over to protect, even four heroes to protect it, the roar. Can't get the connection. And during all this, because they're, you know, Morphling efficiently jungling, Batrider efficiently jungling top, Puck making moves around. Q is getting a f absolutely free lane down bottom. He is 300 gold away from a blink dagger on the tiny as well. So they're going to have this dream initiation to make these plays get on top of a hero that's kind of squishy like the Quap. And he can freely go for these like breaks onto the coil and stuff like that. Yeah, 23. It's done. 12 minutes and 30 seconds with treads. Very nice stuff so far. And Tundra. Well, we got Relics now done on Skeeter. Okay. But uh, yeah, still quite the difference in in the lead that 23 has. I mean, I see them get back on with the pressure on mid. This tier one pretty much getting taken down. 33 and Saxo trying to pull the aggro off for now. Nine. Showing bottom cues in the area. They glyph the wave. They've got for the, the bat. Up. Toss. Not going to quite buy enough time for the rest of them to, to, to get in onto nine. So nine should be all right. We'll see 23 up for snaking here. He's able to close the gap with the waveform. They get something out of this. Yes, yeah, Nay, he saves his buddy, stopping the bat rider from getting a lasso, but will pay with his life. And that is the blink now for Tiny. So easier ways for him to get the jump. And yeah, nine, he's pretty squishy at this point, too. So. Tundra. Heavily on the back, but they can't hit towers either. They, because of this advantage that Talon has in their lineup overall with the Beastmaster being shut down, they don't really hit buildings. So map advantage for Talon, lane advantage, gold advantage, everything going their way. 
We'll see the power in. Makota is going to get lucky. He is. Sure is. Top rune. And it's an arcane as well. And in the meantime, too, they're stacking. They have a, I believe, a quad ancient stack as well on the side of Talon to boost up their bat rider if he'd like to go over there and farm it. Q. Tried to get the jump there on nine, but couldn't quite get the setup. Ollie. I'll get brought down. It's going to be one of those games for Tundra where they just have to farm and farm and farm to recover stuff. The Japs, as we saw it, as we were talking about, yep. There's the stack. Nom nom nom. Q. Still trying to find a catch. He gets it this time. In onto Saxa. Saxa was not ready for that one. Oh, and the lift. He actually... Oh, it doesn't get it in time. I mean, it's only a level one lift. Maybe if it was a level two, he does have enough to just stop the jaunt away. Uh, good efforts, though, for 23. We're already starting to see some of his... Uh... Fancy footwork here as he shifts between the heroes. It's it's always fun watching the Morphling versus Rubik matchup, because then when he turns into the Rubik, he also gets the spell that he's stolen too. So we see he has a Lucery Orb there and potentially some other cool stuff later on. Skinner's Radiance is done. Okay. Is this where they're going to try to make their first actual move on the map? 15 minutes in. Dominator as well. Thing is, though, it's not easy. Puck, blink, tiny, blink. It's just much easier for Talon to make any of these moves. And the initiation is much easier. Ollie, but they don't really want to go on the Enchantress. No. Yeah, it's so much easier for Talon to make any type of jump. Two initiators with blink already. Kind of look to invade. They do see jabs. Should be able to finish him off. And now they can maybe turn it into a tower push. So that first move that they've been able to make, successful. And will there, will there be a chance for Tundra to head into Roshan early this game? Um, no, not with this type of kill, not just yet. They will find some stacks, though. Skitter, going to be happy. Rotation's coming. Ollie scouting it. Here comes the puck and Tiny. Yeah, they're trying to get in for the sidelines. Q He's in with the two-man avalanche toss to get the dream code to follow up onto the two of them. As a bad and will be able to walk away. Skeeter will live, just snaking to fall. I don't think Tundra's mad about that at all. I think they're pretty happy. They're able to steal some stacks. They only lose their five position. Start to recover things. Less than 1k now for Talon. They find another, though. They can't, but they will steal some stacks. Now, definitely catching up on the, the gold front here. Just 1k gold now. Tundra closing the gap as uh, these passive moments continue. It's a very Tundra style, right? Just even if they're behind in laning phase, they're very good at playing the efficient map. Now, skewed up. Getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. 33 also. 870 gold away from his helm. And as we mentioned, there's only really the counter that comes out at level 20 from Enchantress. And that's just, that, that just comes out way too late. But nine! We'll get caught. They do have huge amounts of burst. Hey, Talon, when they find you out alone. Double blinks make it quite easy for them to punish. And they had vision of him there. Tundra, they got Roar, looking for jabs. Nice flame break. Twenty-three's turned up. He wants to fight. They're connecting with all five heroes. On yeah, the side I of mean, Talon. I think Tundra's gonna realize. Oh, uh, Saxa! Well, Saxa still walks straight into it. But if it's just him going down, Tundra's gonna be fine. Snaking though, he does get caught by Dream Coil. They will lose both supports. Can they make the way into the Roche Pit? Is the question now for Talon. Probably considering I, it. Yeah, I think they could, right, if, if 23 wants to go for this. Yeah, I think so. Two heroes down on Tundra. Very hard for the surviving ones to, to kind of interrupt, and the Skeeter wants to walk in, but stick to their triangle. They're nowhere near this Roshan, so it should be an easy one for Talon. Yeah, it's nice and safe when you have the, the Ench creep tank for you and you have high physical damage from the Morphling. 
Yeah, Tundra. No way they can contest. Oh, we go. I'm 23. He's having a dream one. Yeah, this is a really nice morphling showing so far from him. 6-0-5. They can continue to put the pressure on here, too, with these double blinks. Coil back up in 15 seconds. Another power rune for Makoto. And tier 2. This might just drop also. There's a glyph. Do they counter glyph? They will for now, so they keep one creep alive. Whoops. Walked it into the tower while the glyph was still active. Classic core player. But yeah, tower drops. Roast drops. Big stuff. Jabs even, I believe, cutting the mid-wave. Cute little play from the Batrider. Tundra unable to pressure on any front while this is happening. Helm of the Overlord is finished, 33. Does have that one done. Nine close to BKB. So still, like we said, getting their items, coming along. The whole lead kind of feels like it's just, it's the amazing game from the Morphling, right? 6-0-5 on 23. It's part of 11 of 14 kills. He is literally that 3k gold gap at the moment. And it's going to be very tough to bring down. Talon. I know that Tundra's around their own triangle. Nine. He'll be the first to TP back to start dealing with the push at 23. Makoto wants to try to find more. He's gone for boots to travel pretty early in this game on the puck. I, it's You know the way that Tundra's going to play the map when they are behind in the early game. They're just going to split up. They're going to farm. So the bots feel like a pretty good choice to be able to punish these greedy farmers. That's that. They're going to catch Soxa. Can he arrow? I cannot. He'll be brought down. Yeah, happy to use ults for, for kind of these smaller kills with yep. sort of just how, how slow the pace is right now. They know Talon that as long as they can kind of keep taking away one of the members of Tundra here or there, makes it difficult for Tundra to get a move going. Tundra's still going to try regardless. They'll, they'll smoke up with the three of them. Okay. But Talon, I mean, they, they seem pretty well aware of it. They uh, yeah, might they're, even... They're not, I mean, not, is anyone even down? I mean, Japs, Japs is going to head towards the, the area in which Tundra have made the smoke move. Oh. Oh, he's going to show himself. Is he going to get caught? He sees 33. Bonks him back again. It's a bit tricky to get on top, but they still have the telekinesis. BKB will be there, but there's the roar, and there's a lot of physical. Jabs is gone. He even uses the BKB, too. Gets punished. Top, though, nine. Also gets found. And 23. He's poking at the high ground and has forced out the fortification. Tough for him to threaten them to threaten him though. 6k lead. Back to business, even though they did lose a couple heroes here. They're still farming very, very well. And constricting the map. So Tundra. Now at this point, very tough for them to really play. You know, the Tundra-esque style that pe some people do really hate to see where they're sitting in trees, trying to farm arrow creeps, push waves out. Top and mid are very difficult to do that now. They can do it around bottom, but around these two other areas, Talon, they're just ready to jump constantly. Oh, and Q. There's the jump you're talking about, straight in onto Saxo. Another free catch outside the base. No glyph. Another wave pushing in. They're back onto the towers. Tundra, they've got to do something. Lincolns will get broken. Can they get a grab onto 23? No, they Q. cannot. Q's the oh, whoopsie. Oh, okay, a little bit of a misplay there. Makoto ends up jumping in, ends up being the one getting tossed back instead. Q will die for that. Skeet up. Borrowed time will get popped here as he tries to push on for more, but the rest of Talon, they'll step back safely. Oops. I mean, <laughs> Talon has a couple of these happen into some of these games. They both simultaneously jump and toss wrong. Tundra, gonna look to punish that. Age is still for about a minute. Roar up in three seconds. Yeah, they're well out of there though, Talon. Well, 23. Sitting low. The Sonic Wave is available. They don't want to try and do it twice. Nah, it's, they can't do it the second time. Nine has queued up Shard. I think this is one of those that maybe can catch people off guard, the mini silence and stuff like that, but still quite difficult with how many items have been picked up from Talon. Manta for Skitter. Starting to get online. Manta in 15. Two big timings, of course, for the Abaddon. 
If he's able to actually get the hits off, get on top of somebody, can get that silence. But Q always on the prowl. He wants to punish anyone who shows. They're expecting a movement bottom. Jabs. Waiting in the wings. Whoop. Socks it. Able to get away. Jabs. I mean, they're, they're all cheaping in for this one. Telekinesis onto Jabs, but he just pops the BKB. Ooh, they actually canceled the TP from 33. Yeah, Q tries to get it for a toss back. Saxa, he's going to jump in. Oh, whoa. Saxa, he just throws himself in the middle of the fight, and Q says, thank you. Just turns and blows him up with a combo. The Dream calls out under the two of them. The save. Skeeter. He's got his buddy. The flame break. <laughs> trying to knock him out of the Dream Core there. Nice try. Q's back in. Uh, he's able to get the combo here. Ooh, oh. Tossed his forward aggressively, and that's going to be enough for Makoto to jump in and finish your snaking. They're in. 23's into the high ground. 33's trying to turn to look for a raw target, but he's not able to find it. 23 turns into the co-op, jumps in, burst down 33. Tundra, they are struggling here. Oh. Are they even going to get Skeeter? He got silenced and got burst. 23. I mean, some excellent morphling here from him today. That's why he wanted it. Now he's doing so much, just turning into all these different heroes. Yeah, even using their own voice lines against them. <laughs> Dropping a co-op line there against Knight. Onto high ground, no glyph. Talon, the cleanest we've seen them play, I think, in this tournament so far. I mean, this was just a, a bit of a panic, really, from Tundra. They tried to get some sort of a fight going, but they didn't. They just didn't have the, the correct way to go about it. Oh, jabs. Jumps a little far here under tier fours, but he's fine, protected from Lincoln's, and that's a Rax grabbed. Yeah, Tundra. 25 minutes in. They're starting to panic. 33 canceling the TP on the initial go, too. It seems like they had no interest in going, and this is a cool, this is one you never see picked up. Ollie, he has the shard. So maybe that's one of the answers to the hum of the Overlord and stuff like that. The little friends that no one even knows what it does. No, it's, just, it's like a winner's curse. All right. Tags up. And he's been caught. Dead again. Gem picked the up little also. little friends. Early. Yeah, the little friends. How long does it last? I think it's like, what, six seconds or something? Yeah. Got buffed last patch. Doesn't feel like they need it, but it sounds kind of cool if they're able to get something off with it. I mean, so how is this not good again? Explain to me. It only does the summons. True. But it's a big summon when he has an ancient. Yeah, exactly. So, but you only really, I mean, it was, it was theoried around like countering Chen's and I guess like Beastmaster. And so, I mean, yeah. it's, it's something we never really see. So it's very cool. 33. Farewell. Ah, oh, they're fully, I mean, they're completely I mean, I, I, I don't know how 23 loses this game now. Yeah. He's far too far ahead. This is just perfect stuff on the morph. Uh, he's 20,000 no, gold. There's no way 23 can lose this one. No. He's 8 0 9. He's got all the means to be able to shut this down. It, it's feeling pretty much impossible for Tundra. Absolutely. I, I guess there's morph right now. Yeah, they literally just have to have Town throw the game. Mm. Like, 20, yeah, 23's got everything that, that he needs to be able to get the win here. And now Tundra is also, they're just, they're trapped in the base too. They can't even do the Tundra stuff. They just keep all getting found every single time they do step outside. A flawless game from, I mean, two cores, yeah. The puck and the morph. This little switch up that they did, absolutely working. 23. Q. He's going to jump forward. They get Skeeter very low. Won't quite be able to force out the borrowed time immediately. Skeeter's trying to step in towards them. And they can back out successfully, Talon. Come on, Sprites. I really want to see at least one little friends come off in this game. I don't know if it happened down bottom. I don't think it did. But. I don't know if I've even seen it. Does it have like some fancy flashy animation? Honestly, I don't really. We might know. not even know. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably going to do nothing. I mean, they don't need it. They only really need this morphling. And yeah, he's he's proven it. Level 20, 23. Jabs. Got lasso. Jumping in. He's in. He's going to grab 33, 23 jumps forward. He's at the Makoto's able to burst through, and the Dream Cores there is going to be able to catch on to Skeeter. Combo from Q, takes down Snaking, and they'll buy back immediately on the two of them, Tundra. And Talon, they lose nothing for that. They take the two kills, forced out two buybacks, and it doesn't really cost them anything, Talon. Nope. They're chilling. Full desperation for Tundra. So we see it again. Clean and easy. 
You know, any time that 23 even feels like, oh man, there's a chance that I can get like silence. Nope, instantly turns it to Quap links away. Roche, next on the menu. I'm gonna bring up my graph and take a look. Yeah, I mean, 97% or so it's looking like. I definitely expected. I think 3% might be generous, but that's probably the SEA factor. Just kidding. Love you, Talon. I mean, 23 ways. <laughs> There's no way. There's no There's way. There's no way they'll lose this one. No, this no, is no. just... Yeah, 21k lead, 29 minutes in. A Morph having a, an incredible performance in it. Oh, absolutely. In a game where Morph is, has not really been answered. I mean, that's, that's the power of getting it lost, lost in the draft there. You see how good compared to the average 23 is having a game hit. I mean, yeah, 23,000 net worth. That's, that's his name. What's the GPM actually looking like? 726? Hell yeah. And even being careful. He's not even going to go a greedy item next. He is going to go for the BKB. Just, just the BKB and close it up. Yep. That's the planet. Next tower. Glyph is forced. What can Tundra do? One last hurrah. Blink picked up for Skeeter. He's hoping to surprise them with this one, but it's into an Aegis. It's into an impossible fight. Jumps in. Yeah, but Jabs are still able to get the BKB off. They weren't able to keep in chain controlled. Excuse him, the three man toss to Avalanche. That's going to be taking 33 out to start the fight off. 30, 23. He's in onto Snaking, ready to dive into the base, take out some of these supports. Godlike now on the Morphling. Lasso's down to Skeeter. 23 also picking up nine inside the base. GG. They'll tap out. GG is called. This game.